How's it going, Moto Fanatics? I'm Chris Kiefer. Welcome to RacerXOnline.com. And we are here at Glen Helen Raceway today to ride the 2024 YZ250. There's no F, it's no four stroke. It is pure Brat two stroke nation right now here at Glen Helen Raceway. It's the 50th anniversary. Yamaha came out with this beautiful white and purple magenta, whatever you want to call it. Uh, brings me back to my childhood. And uh, I'm excited. Yes, I'm actually excited to ride a two-stroke. I know some of you guys say, Kiefer, you're a two-stroke hater. Hate is a strong word. I prefer four-strokes, but I'm excited to revisit this YZ250 two-stroke today with my friend Kenny Day from Fox Racing. Uh, we're going to tag team this bike. We're going to go over it, uh, give you some thoughts on what it's like to ride, maybe compare it to a four-stroke, give you some suspension specs, as well as jetting. Carburation is back today, folks. I'm excited about that. Uh, we'll try to go over some carburetor settings that uh, I feel like you guys need to have if you're buying this bike. So stay tuned. We'll be right back and we'll discuss this whole two-stroke build. guys, we're back. Uh, just got off the 2024 YZ250 two-stroke. Um, Simon Cudby is behind the camera right now. If he could edit uh, every like a thumbs up, every little time we say the word fun, there's probably going to be 18 thumbs across your screen right now. So uh, we're going to try not to use the word fun, but I'm going to start it out by saying I'll admit that I'm not a huge two-stroke lover, but when I ride them, I have a good time. They're fun. Um, I brought Kenny Day in here. Um, 150 pounds? 155 ish. So he's more 125 kind of guy, but we put him on the 252 stroke today. So, again, rollover from last year. Yamaha didn't really make many changes or zero changes to the YZ250. So, um, what they did change was obviously the 50 anniversary uh, colorway. So, that is cool. Um, but I'll let Kenny start off and just talk about the YZ250. I'll give you guys some specs here in a minute, but. Just give an overall view from a guy that come right off of a YZ250F. Yeah, definitely. I, I'll start by saying we're not going to use fun, I'm going to use exciting. Okay. I was very exciting, excited for today. It's been a long time since I've ridden one of these, and if you go into the YouTube archives, you'll see videos of me looping 252 strokes out. Oh, really? Okay, so the whole drive here, I was a little like, I got to take it easy. Now, with that said, you get the Glen Helen, immediately jump on this thing, lap one, and you just feel that power and the freedom of the bike how easy it is to just kind of go in and out of corners, doesn't soak into the ruts, it's just like, and it's very lively. So that's yep. my exciting feeling. Yep. And immediately I just felt like I was back at home, you know, and, and that's an, a, a feeling that I haven't felt in a long time. Did you so. grow up on 252 strokes or is it 125 mostly? 125 and 252 strokes. Okay. Like my years on a 252 stroke weren't very long, but I spent a lot of time on these things. Okay, yeah, so for me, not a lot of time for me growing up on a YZ252 stroke, mostly YZ125, but nonetheless, um, if I could paint you guys a picture on who this bike would be for, uh, you want to go have a good time. You're not worried about, um, I'm not training to go race on the weekends. I just want to hop on a motorcycle, have a good time, be able to shred some berms, jump some jumps, and bro down with your homies, right? Yeah. I feel like this for $8,000 is a nice feature for those type of people. Reliability, easy. Um, ease of maintenance, no problem. It's just very easy to work on a two-stroke. I'm a novice mechanic, um, so for me, I can do a top in on a two-stroke. It's, it's no problem for me. Um, but for me, right away, hopping on this thing from a four-stroke, you're gonna notice vibration. We talked about that, yes. right? So uh, through the handlebars mostly, not through the feet, just a lot of vibration coming from a four-stroke. But once you ride it, you get used to it. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, ergonomics, um, not quite as good as a four stroke, but obviously way better than the old style two strokes that they came up with. Um, 
with the YZ250, if you guys are like, oh, what's better, a KTM 250 or a YZ250? I prefer the carbureted YZ250 over the KTM uh, simply because of just how much response I have, a little bit more excitement down low. It feels lighter than the KTM. Um, I still think the KTM has more over rev, but for me, the engine is just exciting off the bottom. Uh, I totally agree, and it feels consistent. Yeah. The few times that I have ridden the, the new generation KTM 250s, it kind of threw me off a little bit, especially in the air, having like that over rev. That was a, a new thing to me, yeah. Not like having like to where it almost like hits a rev limit and it almost stops your momentum yeah, in the air. Right. That was a scary thing when I rode the KTM. Uh, being back on this, I will point out to, to say that I have been riding the new generation Yamaha 250F. Yep. Now going from that generation to this generation two-stroke, ergos and bike feel similar. more of the similar. Okay. You know, if you look at what two years ago with the Yamahas and they had a big wide tank, if you went from one to the other, it felt weird. So going from the, the 250F I'm riding right now to this, felt more like at home. Yeah, it's very narrow. Like when I got on it, just the slim profile of the seat to the shroud, very narrow. Of course, it's 227 pounds, uh, so very light. Me and Kenny were talking about how uh, for me, when I'm used to riding these tracks on a four-stroke, it almost opens up the track and makes me rethink how to ride Glen Helen because I'm so used to going Mach 10 into a corner on a four-stroke, I'm not up to that kind of speed on this bike, so it almost makes me arc the track better. Yeah. Am I right? Definitely. I I've also always struggled when I come to Glen Helen trying to get into what I call the local lines, which is like very wide. People are just running the berms, all those things. And on a four stroke, you almost feel like you have to just kind of ride them out. Yep. On the two stroke today, I did similar. I could go arc and then I could just cut across and I could stay out of some of the deep loam of the berms. And I always kind of had that power to get me to where I wanted to point and shoot and go. Um, I talk about lugability on four strokes. This thing actually likes third gear. Um, for me, sometimes I would lug it a little bit in third gear and corner so I could come out and not have to shift. Yep. Second gear is really lively, but also very short. Third gear is that long linear power, but it actually gives me some more traction here at uh, Glen Helen Raceway. And surprisingly, unlike the YZ125, the jetting is really clean. Yes. Like I don't feel like it's really rich off the bottom. It has a nice uh, free feel, like Kenny said, but also it's very clean. Uh, we're just running pump 91 gas, run it to 50 to one. Um, and I think it's it's just fine. Chassis wise, uh, we're a little soft. We're gonna talk about the clicker setting, but it is a soft sprung yeah. machine. I'm 170, he's 150. Coming down these hills, it gets really low, but it soaks up a lot of that small bump square edge that I can't soak up on my 450. Yeah, definitely. Out of the corners today, typical Glen, Glen Helen, you're starting to get that little bit of chop, especially on this, like we were point and shooting across the track, so you're getting some of the square edges. So with it being soft, it actually was. I, I felt the, the chassis absorbing that, yep. which was like a great feeling. Uh, I will say that getting back on this, coming out of some of the corners, you really had to like bring out the technique that I, at least that I was taught as a kid, being up over the front, squeezing with your legs, because if not, this thing would start to kind of break loose and get away from you. So a little bit of throttle control, getting over the front, getting the hips out, all those things really to me, help a lot more on the two-stroke than at, on the four-strokes. I feel like I can kind of just get away with just rolling the throttle out. So. Uh, that brings up something for me I just remembered. Like, I feel like I'm not as locked in on this platform layout versus a four-stroke. I feel like I'm more locked in as when I'm coming out of a corner, like I can grip a little bit better. Yeah. This seems to be a little bit slick on the sides when I'm gripping. Yes. Um, so for me, that's kind of what, like Kenny said, you got to lock yourself in, kind of tighten your core, and the seat, Although grippy, it's still kind of very flat in nature, so it pushes you back. Yep. This thing has enough power to pull you back. Without a doubt. There's a couple times that I did hook up and you feel that thing start to come out of the corner and wanting to wheelie. And at that point, yeah, you really do have to control how lively the power is in second gear. Right. I agree with you that me being light, I could lug this thing around almost like a 450 at times yep. in third gear in a lot of the tight areas, which is helpful. Um, all right, so suspension, KYB, obviously great stuff, but soft. So. I went in three clicks and slowed the rebound down two, and then I also went in two clicks on the low speed, went in a quarter turn on the high speed, and then slowed down. I'm just trying to bring everything a little bit firmer, bring it up, and just get more hold up. Actually, doing that drastic of a change didn't really affect anything negative on the track. Usually when I go to a four stroke and make that drastic of a change, I feel it, and I'm like, I don't like this setting in this area, but 
actually it helped me in every aspect. I don't know if you had a chance to try it. Yeah, so the one thing I'll say is like even with the big changes that you did make, it it's it is the two stroke just has that nice light feeling. So you're not getting into some of the big bumps and you're you're getting the big slam. Loading. You, yeah, it's yeah. not loading. It always feels like it's just a little bit floating, you yeah. know? So coming th into the bumps, you feel like you're floating. Coming out of the corners, you still feel like you're floating. The thing is like really, really good at just feeling light and nimble. And loading would probably be the best thing yep. to say about that. You don't have that on the two stroke. Uh, a lot of you guys want me to compare this thing, right? We talked about it while we wrap this up. Kiefer, it's a KTM or YZ250. I see that heading on my emails all the time. Look, at, if it was me, I'm not uh, going up in high elevation. I don't have to screw with my jetting that much. Once I find a spec, that's kind of going to be my setting. So um, having a carburetor or having FI is neither here nor there for me. I don't really care. What I do like about the carburation is, like I said, throttle response and just that, that feeling that I have, like getting out of a corner. The KTM doesn't quite have that snap, that excitement, but the KTM does not vibrate as much as a YZ250. But if you had to uh, say, Kiefer, you have to choose, I'm choosing a YZ250 just for the simple fact of suspension, um, ease of riding, and excitement. So just, just that in general. I don't know if you had a chance to ride a KTM. I have, I've rode the KTM, yes. It doesn't vibrate as much. Overall though, what you get from the whole package here, the chassis, the KYB suspension, that still nice plush feeling on the two-stroke is just a great package. It's, it's, it's simple, you know? You could buy this bike. Honestly, you could leave it exactly as it is. You could put a pipe on it. I think that's the only thing I would do. Pipe, get rid of these grips, because come on. Other than that, <laughs> great, right out of the box. Yeah, you already ripped your hands. Yes, I ripped my hands wide yeah. open. He's got baby hands here. Yeah. Uh, we call it grapes, those are grapes. Yeah. Uh, if you are gonna put a pipe, PC pipe, silencer, FMF, whatever, you might wanna go up to a 180 main jet. Uh, you guys are saying, hey, should I run race gas? If you're just a weekend guy, there's nothing wrong with running pump gas. Run 50 to one, you'll be fine. If you want to run race gas, uh, there are several options. Some people run 50-50 uh, mix, C12 pump, or just run T2, that is pre-mixed from BP. Um, that's easy, but you're gonna have to go uh, a little bit richer on your main jet when you go to a pipe and a silencer, which we will try. You can go to keyforinktesting.com here shortly and we'll do a little pipe and silencer review. But if right now, very fun bike. Ding! That's another little thing. Ding! Fun. Uh, so YZ250, uh, very fun bike, and it's a great option for you guys just wanna go have fun and just hop on a bike and hang out with your buddies and then drink some beers afterwards, right? Oh, uh, thousand percent. So Good you would ride a two-stroke? I would ride a two-stroke, yes. I would not, but if it's all I had, I would take a two-stroke. I would have fun on it, but four-strokes are so good. I'm sorry. Let's be real. I love four-strokes. Uh, no hate comms, Yamaha. Sorry. I'm going to end that like that. But yep. uh, 2024 Yamaha YZ250. If you have any questions, Chris, K-R-I-S, at KieferInkTesting.com. I'm here to help you and guide you, and uh, hopefully you spend your money in the right direction, because God knows we ain't rich. And uh, don't forget, 12 issues, $30.00. Racer X magazine, a lot of things in there that you can't see right here on the website. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe, get a free gift. I think it's a calendar or something right now. So uh, that's cool. And we'll see you on the next test, which is probably in about two hours. See ya.